Hey there, programmers! Welcome back to Pocket Code Tutorials. My name is CodeGreen01, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to use data in Pocket Code. So, data. Data is very, very cool and powerful, and I'm so stupefied to find that a lot of people don't know how to actually use this. So, I just thought, you know what? I'm going to make a data tutorial, and I want you guys to learn this because this is very, very, very powerful data is very important and we should all use it okay so data i created a little uh, program here with just one sprite for an example and what i'm going to do here is create a whole user interface from data and using only one image in pocket code so we're going to create a button out of this one sprite and as you guys can see here's the one sprite it's only this you know yellow rectangle and that's all we're using okay and it was built in pocket Kit pocket paint so it's only like what what 0.50 gigabytes maybe so yeah and the rest we're gonna use as code so yeah let's get into it so as you guys can see in the scripts of button uh, when the program starts it'll be placed at zero but here's the thing I set a variable uh, a data variable button to go with the object button so as you guys can see here I have about six variables in my program button tap total TTS TTP T1 T2 now how do I use data I'm a little weird on how I use data so what I want is the tap total to be out on the top so TTS means total tap total stop and TTP, TTP means tap total play okay pretty easy and T1 is just like a T1 and T2 just organize TTS and TTP so yeah pretty simple and let's get back into it so the button will be inside of the object at negative 25x and 25y and when I tap uh, this object what will happen is this this is a loop right here actually this is a loop using data so what happens here is we're actually basically tricking the object and telling it to switch in between these two scripts all the time so it's kind of consistently switches from here this script to this script when you press it and then from this script to this script when you press it so here's what happens here when you tap the button it'll change the total taps by one and if the button equals play that means if data button equals play and let me show you guys that data button if button equals play which we'll press now okay so wait, hold on let's actually fix that if button equals play okay that's what will happen what will happen is it'll change the variable TTS by one and set the variable button to stop which will change the, the button to stop basically and we'll set the color of the object to 135 giving it that cool little effect that's animating the button so it looks like it actually got pressed and it changes the title also so that's pretty neat now when the button gets tapped again and it equals stop because see we set it to stop last time it'll change the variable ttp by one it's a different variable but that's what we're looking for we're analyzing when tts changes and when ttp is tapped so when stop or play is enabled it'll basically do the math if you know what i mean but yeah same same function there now how do we position these variables to create like a user interface with this data and that's what i wanted to get into next so after we're done with this we're going to go ahead and go into data so what i did here was i created a, a object in pocket paint and deleted the object and just used it for its script so this is where i put all the data variables inside of my program or like when i want to position something or put like all the data in certain spots this is what i do so it's like a template for me and as you guys can see here I have T1 set uh, set to play that's the title title 1 and title 2 play and stop and tap total like title to tap total stop tap total play get it title 1 title 2 so we're gonna use sh uh, show variable tap uh, tap total at negative 10x 300y TTS at negative 110 and that's structuring the data right there etc see I'm placing all the data at certain coordinates and showing them in the program that way it creates a user interface look so all the text and all the numbers you see on the screen will be positioned in a certain area on the screen with these coordinates as you guys can see with these bricks so let's go ahead and play the program and see if it works well 
And as you guys can see, we have the total caps right here on top, the object, and the data variable button placed inside the center of the object. And as you guys see here, we have the two, title one and title two, play and stop, um, and TTS and TTP right there next to the titles. So what happens when we press play, play should be recorded, accidentally right, right next to the play and added to the total tab. And when it stops press, it'll add to the total stop and also add it to the total tab amount. So yeah, guys, I thought I'd show you guys that. That is a very neat way to use data. So how can we use the system right here? So basically what we're doing is collecting data from the user. When we input our figure on the screen, we're collecting all those taps of stop and place. So now we can use those two variables to control a certain, another object in the program or a sound. So when I press stop, it'll stop all the music, right? And say if play is set to 17 and stop is set to 12, etc or whatever you could create a function that says okay or a script that says okay when uh play equals 17 and stop equals 12 play sound whatever okay or like you can make a set a random variable to like play a random song so you'll have like a list of songs so you have like 12 songs right inside of an object and you have a data called sound from 1 to 12. So what will happen is you'll use the random function and from 1 to 12 and it choose a song from 1 to 12. And it'll play dependent upon if it's from 1 to 12, you'll have them listed. And if it's like six or something, it'll play song number six, for, for example. But yeah, guys, I thought I'd show you how powerful data actually is. And if you guys didn't really understand half of what I said, well, don't worry. Keep watching the videos, play with the data and see how it works. This, this stuff is fun, dude. You guys can create all kinds of things with data. It's, it's, there's so much you can do with it. I can't even put it all in one video, which is why I'm going to be creating more tutorials on how to use data. So make sure you guys look out for that. And uh, yeah, guys, keep your brain juices flowing. And your boy, Code Green Zero One, signing out.